Today, I'll be talking about Shane Van Gisbergen and whether or not he'll be full-time in the NASCAR Cup Series in 2025 or not. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. Shane Van Gisbergen has stated publicly over the course of the last couple months that he would like to be a full-time NASCAR Cup Series driver in 2025. He has stated this in multiple different interviews, that he's in a learning process this year in 2024, because if he does well enough in the NASCAR Xfinity Series and his select Cup Series starts this year, he hopes to have a full opportunity to go full-time Cup racing in the 2025 season. Now, Shane Van Gisbergen is going to make select NASCAR Cup Series starts this year. Originally, it was seven NASCAR Cup Series starts, but about a week or two ago with the announcement with the new partnership he had with the sponsorship, I think with Quadlock, if I'm not mistaken, that partnership has been expanded from seven races up to eight races, which they've added on Daytona International Speedway. Those select NASCAR Cup Series starts, which we originally thought were going to be with Trackhouse Racing this year, they're actually going to be in the number 16 car for call racing. However, according to reports, I do believe that Trackhouse Racing is going to be preparing those cars. So I expect Shane Van Gisbergen, especially in the races, he's going to run some intermediates. He's going to run, I think, at Las Vegas later this year. He's going to run the Coke Cole 600. He is going to run both Talladega races this year. I believe he's going to run Watkins Glen as well. And he's going to have a mixture of races to learn the craft of the next gen car on ovals as well. He's also, of course, this season running full time in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, driving the number 797 car for Colleg Racing. And so far in the last couple of years, he did win the Chicago Street Course and also did finish in the top 10 in his second start, becoming the first driver to have their first two starts, have two top 10 finishes in a row since Terry Labonte back in 1978. And in the Xfinity Series so far, he's made four Xfinity Series starts and has one top five finish. That coming, of course, at Atlanta Motor Speedway, finishing in third position and has two top ten finishes and got a second career top ten finish in Xfinity at Phoenix International Raceway. And in his oval start so far, he's only had one finish outside the top 20, and that was an engine failure that sadly took place at Las Vegas when he was having a chance to get inside that top 20, but unfortunately that engine failure cost him a shot and opportunity. Shane Van Gisbergen is learning relatively quickly, and I think he's only going to get better, and I think he's only going to get stronger as the season progresses and as the season goes on. He's improving on a week-by-week -week basis. He's got really great partnerships and sponsorship from Red Bull, Enhanced Health, and other companies like Quadla coming on to work with him, but he's been getting a lot of these sponsorships, and I think Focus Health is also sponsoring him as well at some point this season. So he's got a lot of sponsorship and work with teams, which is something that he's going to need if he wants to move up full time to cup as well. But Shane Van Gisbergen has been one of the most impressive drivers that's been coming through the ranks over the course of the last couple of seasons. So now we're going to talk about if he would, in fact, join the Cup Series full time, what teams could he end up driving for? So there are three rides that I think are most likely available for SVG going into 2025. The first ride that Shane Van Gisberg could drive for is a 99 car for Trackhouse Racing. Now, that ride is currently owned by Daniel Suarez, who has been in the number 99 car for the last four seasons. Daniel Suarez is under contract here, according to Justin Mars, but he did state that after Daniel Suarez won at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Originally thought the contract Suarez had was for the 2025 season, but we now know for sure that it's only through 2024. Now, Daniel Suarez definitely is in a much better position now to stay in the number 99 car going into 2025 because he did win that race at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And right now has been pretty consistent, though, outside of the win in Atlanta. He, I don't think he scored a top 10 finish up to this point, but I think the trackhouse cars have been a little bit lackluster on speed. I know Ross just got a couple top five finishes recently, but he's had about a 15th to 16th place car in the last few weekends, so he did have a top 10 car in Las Vegas, but he did struggle at Phoenix. If Daniel Suarez does not absolutely gradually improve, I could see a move where Shane Van Gisbergen moves into the number 99 car. That's not saying that Daniel Suarez will be let go of Trackhouse Racing. I still think Daniel Suarez more than likely is going to stay with Trackhouse Racing regardless. But I wouldn't be surprised or shocked if Shane Van Gisbergen, especially if he absolutely improves in Xfinity, gets better and better on the ovals, and continues to win races, because I think he is going to win Xfinity Series races and make the playoffs this year, and especially win some Cup Series races this year, and is more consistent in select races than Suarez is, ooh, that might put Daniel Suarez in a difficult position. But I don't think Daniel Suarez is leaving Trackhouse Racing altogether. But 
I think there is a very good chance and a strong possibility that if Daniel Suarez does not step up to the play and maybe win another race, because I think for Daniel Suarez 1,000% keep the seat, I think he is going to have to win another race this season. I know he's got some good spots and funding working with him. A couple companies like Quaker State have been working with him, Freeway Insurance as well. But I think the biggest thing that's going to be a major factor for Suarez if he can go out there and win another race. If he wins another race, I think keeps the 99 seat. If not, I think Shane Van Gisbergen takes the seat. But this is not the only ride as a possibility. The second ride that could be available is a third full-time track house car, that being the number 97. Now, the number 97 holds a special place in Shane Van Gisbergen's career. Obviously, he's using that number in the NASCAR Xfinity Series this season for his full-time runs. Obviously, not using it a couple, unfortunately, because he's using it in the 16 car for select cup starts. But there could be a possibility that a third full-time cup car with Trackhouse could be available. Because I think that they are trying to find a way to make Trackhouse Racing a four-car organization. Have Ross Chastain in the 1, have Daniel Suarez in the 99, have Shane Van Gisberg in the 97, and that number 71 car that Zane Smith has, that becomes a full NT Trackhouse car, because technically the 71 car right now is a Spire Motorsports car. Now, how would they make that third car at Trackhouse a full-time entry? Well, they are going to need a charter. And I think there's two teams that are really in play when it comes to this. The first one is Stuart Haas Racing. In the last few weeks, there's been a lot of talk and rumblings and rumors that Stuart Haas Racing could be switching manufacturers at the end of this season. A lot of people do believe that there's a potential that they could switch to Chevy for one year. And if Honda does eventually get approved, that could be where they lose the charter. And I wouldn't be surprised if a driver like Chase Briscoe would lose a seat because he's been under contract with Ford for many years. I wonder if he would lose a seat. If they were to switch over to manufacture like Chevrolet, because right now under contract with Ford, Super Haas Racing is required to have four full-time teams and four full-time cars. If they were to switch to Chevy, there is a good chance, especially with them struggling a little bit for sponsorship and funding, I would imagine they, they are going to downsize from a four-car team to a three-car team. That is certainly one way that that charter could become available. The other possibility is Colic Racing. College Racing is struggling for funding and sponsorship right now. They obviously were supposed to have a driver like Matt Benedetto drive for them for quite a few races this year, but they've been having fully funded drivers throughout the season. They've had Derek Krause the last couple weeks. He's going to run a few more races later this year. They have AJ Allmendinger, who's actually running a third call car this upcoming week at Circuit of the Americas. He's running a few select races, including Bristol by the time you're watching this. And then, of course, we've seen other drivers like Josh Williams, who will also run in Marzo later this year. But they're trying to get drivers who are fully funded who bring a little bit of sponsorship in funding. I think if call racing was smart here and they want to save a little bit of money and help their team out in a big way, I could see them selling a charter over to Trackhouse Racing, or they could get their team fully acquired from Trackhouse Racing because I think, especially with the partnership that Trackhouse and Colic has currently at the moment, I think that could be a really strong and a good option for them if they were to make that move. And the third and final team that I think I could see is Colic Racing in the number 16 car. Like I mentioned a second ago, when it comes to the charter situation, Colic Racing really needs sponsorship and funding. And Shane Van Gisbergen does have sponsorship and funding with him. In fact, Wendy's is going to be sponsoring for a couple races this year. Red Bull, I wouldn't be surprised or shocked in the coming years if they have a full sponsorship with him. You know that Enhanced Health is working with them this year for majority of races. Quadlock has a partnership with him for multiple races this season. And he's got a couple other companies that are getting him some extra starts in the Cup Series this year. Like I mentioned, they're struggling with funding and sponsorship right now, and I know that Chris Rice has stated publicly in recent weeks that their, that their charters right now are not available for the next 24 months, but with the partnership the Call Racing does have with Trackhouse Racing, especially in the Xfinity Series, and with their Cup Series program as well, I would imagine that Call of Racing would be the team that he absolutely would strongly go with as well. Their team that I think is a wild card for SVG. Because like I said, he's driving for them full-time in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. But obviously, I believe the Trackhouse Racing is over there, especially their engineers are helping them out over there to make sure the cars are really, really good. But if I'm Call of Racing, I'd be focusing on one full-time entry with Daniel Hammer. Your team is not as strong as it used to be a few years ago, and I think if they wanted to play it really, really safe, they would get Shane Van Gisbergen behind the wheel of that seat. I think he'd be really helpful with the team, and I think that certainly could be an option if they weren't to sell a charter they could bring 
SVG in there, and he could be a good guidance for Daniel Heimerich especially and really help get the program flowing and up and going. And it really wouldn't be replacing any drivers over there because right now the 16 car is a rotation seat. So I think the Call of Racing 16 car is absolutely a major option and a really strong possibility. So those are the teams he could go to. Now the big question you're probably watching this video. Will Shane Van Gisbergen go full-time Cup Series racing in 2025? I think more than likely, yes. And here's why I think it's more than likely, yes, he's going to be full-time in the Cup Series. Shane Van Gisbergen is a really, really fast learner. He is doing an incredible job in the Select Xfinity Series starts he's had currently up to this point, and I only expect him to get better. I think he's going to win multiple races in the NASCAR Xfinity Series this year, not just on road courses, but if Call of Racing can improve their oval equipment a little bit, I can see Shane Van Gisbergen winning on ovals as well. There's some good tracks coming up for him. Bristol later this year, we saw Marcus Ambrose do an incredible job at that track. You think about tracks like Martinsville, you think about tracks like Short Tracks. I think that Shane Van Gisbergen, especially if how much he did get a top 10 this past week at Phoenix, I imagine that Shane Van Gisbergen is going to get much quicker. And I think he's going to impress in his select cup starts as well. Not just on the road courses, but I think also on the ovals as well. So yes, I do 100% believe that by 2025, he will be a full-time cup series driver. Now, where do I predict he goes? Well, I think the 16 car... It, like I said, it's definitely an option for him to go to, but I think that's the least likely. I think most likely what is going to happen is that Shane Van Gisbergen is going to go into the number 97 car. As much as I did mention the 99 car could be a possible option, I think that Daniel Suarez is going to get retained for 2025, and I think he's going to get a multi-year extension. Justin Marks really likes Daniel Suarez, and Daniel Suarez has felt welcome over at Trackhouse Racing for a long time. So I don't think the number 99 car is going to be available. I think what's going to happen is, is I think the number 97 car is what Shane Van Gisbergen is going to run full-time in the Cup Series. And I think a charter is going to be sold probably from Colleague Racing is my guess. I know that SHR is definitely a possibility, and with the rumors, like I mentioned, of Sewer Haas Racing switching over to Chevy, maybe even Honda, I think that that could be an open possibility, but I think the charter is going to get sold from Call of Racing, especially right now with the charter being with Colleague. You think about Call of Racing with the partnership they have with Traca. So I think in 2025, I think that charter from Call of Racing is going to go to Track House, and I think that Shane Van Gisbergen is going to be a full-time track house racing driver in the 2025 season. He's a talented up driver. He knows how to get it done behind the wheel. And I think he does deserve a chance and opportunity to run full-time in the Cup Series. So, that is going to be today's special video on Shane Van Gisbergen. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. The notifications on so if I win a video, does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support on Patreon as well. Let's go to below that and comment your thoughts below on today's video. Do you think Shane Van Gisbergen is going to be a full-time cup driver in 2025? And if so, let me know what team you think he'll drive for. Later today on the channel, I'll have reactions to the pole sitter for the NASCAR Cup Series race at Bristol. Whoever wins the pole there. And I'll also have the Truck Series race view from Bristol. Then on Sunday, I'm going to have a starting lineup video for the Food City 500. And I'll have the Food City 500 race review. Then on Monday, there should be a NASCAR news video dropping on the channel. Got a ton of great NASCAR content dropping on the channel over the next couple weeks, especially with Coda coming up, that I cannot wait for you guys to check out. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.